Hey guys, uh, what's up? How is it going? Welcome back for another vlog here on the Clown Vapes channel. I uh, hope everybody's been having a good week. Hope everybody had a nice and safe holiday. Honestly, it's been it's it was a long <laughs> week. Honestly, very busy, very not busy. It was kind of really really weird, but you know, it is what it is. We we had a good Thanksgiving. Did some stuff with my wife's family. Did some stuff with my family. And then just got to relax for a couple days, sort of. We tend to keep very busy when we're home. It's the weirdest thing ever. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do some bloggy type stuff and all that kind of thing, as always. Um, I would like to start off with uh, saying thank you to everybody who has supported me on all this and that watches my videos and all that kind of thing. You guys are awesome. With that being said, um at least for the next three months or so i will not be able to live stream due to me getting my first community strike it happens it is what it is if you talk to me outside of this place you kind of know what's happening uh, otherwise i'm not gonna bash whoever you know put the strike against me publicly that's really their prerogative their company whatever i could care less um so it is what it is so we're going to be on James's channel for the next three months. So please go sub, go sub him, go check out his channel. The dude does awesome videos. Like his reviews are just getting better and better with every new video that he puts out. So, all right. So that was first off. Secondly, um, I started thinking about how I do the vlog and how things are done. And with me losing live streaming, I felt that. Um, I needed a change. I needed a reformat, do something more for me and that kind of thing. I mean, why with us doing the live videos, that was helping me gain some ground, gain some views and all that. And I feel that putting out one video a week is not enough. And I felt that I should probably separate the review from the vlog. And that way you don't have to sit through an entire hour on the vlog. You could watch my review video or you could watch my vlog video or both really your call at that point so you guys can enjoy all sorts of things without it just turning into an hour-long thing especially if you just want to watch the, the 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 review portion of the video i'm gonna just put it out there for you guys instead make it easier on you Alrighty, so we're gonna jump uh the way we're gonna do the vlog is kind of everything except for the review or whatnot at the end so we're gonna do we're gonna do and yes i, I like doing this because i like to Give myself hand signals of where I want these things. I tend to like build my videos to where editing is kind of being told at me while I'm doing the video. It's the weirdest thing ever I do, but hey, it makes my life easier, right? Makes my life easier. All right, so we're going to do, uh, as always, we're going to do some what I've been vaping, some news and advocacy. You guys can uh, you know check that kind of thing out. And we're going to do a beer. And if I have enough time, I might do a vape meal. We'll see. That one I'm not sure. But you'll see once I post on here what I actually got through. So with all that being said, let's jump into some news and advocacy. Let's do it. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, right before I switched over to this. I went into news and advocacy for some weird reason. Uh, you know what? We're, <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm just kind of like all over the place right now. Uh, I am actually waiting on maintenance people to come in and do some things that we need fixed around here. So it's kind of one of those weird things. All right. So we're going to do what I've been vaping. Then we'll do some news and advocacy. All right. So what I've been vaping, I've been rocking that goon low pro. It's got the uh, special edition Half Moon's drip tip right there that came for the uh, LE package. As you can tell, since my camera's actually focused kind of ish, this thing has been worn to ish. I, I'm seriously like just, oh my God, on how much I've torn and worn this thing. I actually got to show it at, to Stan at the expo and he's like, dude, that is all the wear and tear you put through it already. I was like, yeah, yeah, I've been destroying it. So, I mean, even with the, uh, with, with the clown dreamer, I just, uh, you guys can't really see it, but there is some wear and tear in there. That guy has been used and abused. So I got the goon low pro with the, uh, with the, uh, goon style build deck in there. 
So yeah, I'm I'm seriously enjoying this little guy. It's a completely different vape. I'll say that much. It is a very different style of vape, and it makes for a different style of uh, flavor and how it is. I mean, I have the Goon 22, I have the 24, I have the 1.5, and I have the 25, and I have the Low Pro now. I will say this guy really does give you a different style of vape compared to the rest of them. It has a goon feel, a goon way to build, but it's a completely different atomizer from the rest of them. And it's 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 gnarly. I like it. It's very it's tiny. It doesn't have like too much like you know height. So it helps. It's really nice. And in that I got a fruit basket. Really enjoying that juice very thoroughly. It's an awesome juice. I don't do many fruit vapes. I'm more of a desserty kind of guy. I'm starting to learn that more and more about myself. I don't touch a whole lot of fruit vapes. All right. So up next, we have the Warlocks Guardian with the profile on top. Blue on blue. Super matchy, matchy game right there. That is just one of the, my favorite, favorite combos. And in that, I have uh, Orange Bubbly from Danish. Really good juice. I'm actually liking it. It's like an orange soda kind of thing. It's really good. It's got kind of like the the, the blast off from uh, the fountain. It has that same style of like, uh, you can tell it's meant to be a soda. It has that fizziness and you don't even know where it's coming from. It's like the weirdest thing ever. And I want to know their secret. I really do. Still rocking that canthal mesh that comes with it. I don't know. It's one of those what else can I say kind of things. It's it's an awesome guy. I still want to try that that new nichrome. I think it's nichrome. Nichrome coils that have come out for the uh, for the profile. That's like a third party one. I want to try them out and see what's up with that. Then uh, next I have the uh, Warlock's Hammer Goon. This is my titanium goon. With the green uh, cap, so it's all like Joker style. You know, it's got to match my green button, you know, that kind of thing. And on top of that, this is actually a Vandy Vape drip tip that I bought just for this purpose because it actually has like a little bit of greens and yellows and purple in there. So it does the whole Joker setup kind of thing. In that, I have Orchata Churro from Danish, which I'm not going to lie, I'm really enjoying this juice. It's really good. It's uh, very different and. I'm really liking it. Uh, I've tried a couple other horchatas and they're not up to par. This one, it's more of a on the churro side. I'll give you that much. It's got a, a nice heavy cinnamon. It's not too, too bad. It does have like the creaminess of the horchata in the background, which that part is very, very nice. All right. So lastly, but surely not leastly, it is the double barrel dead rabbit rta combo and i am seriously loving this whole setup here it is just in insane it's amazing and i really don't know what else i can say about it you know and ah oh, it's just so good and with this i have a steadfast chino in there really good juice uh if you're looking for a coffee vape two i recommend for sure is that one and the Americano, which I can't, uh, I'm trying to remember what Isis company's name is. Uh, I feel like an ass right now. Give me a second. God, I feel like an ass right now. Seriously, I really do. Um, either way, his Americano, really good juice. Uh, if you guys could ever get a hold of it, do it. Seriously. Uh, Grindhouse, that's what it is. You, If you want a coffee vape that tastes like a nice, strong cup, cup of coffee that isn't overly sweetened, Go get you some Grindhouse. They are good. This one is a very close second. If you're looking for a different style of coffee, it's a really good one. All right. And I am going to do a review on the uh, Dead Rabbit RTA. Really? I'm liking the, 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 the RTA. I really am. All right. So that, that has been what I've been vaping. Well... I will say the zero pod. You'll see more of this this week. Hint, hint. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been vaping. Uh, let's just jump into some news and advocacy. Yeah, let's do it. All 
All right, guys, some uh, vape news and advocacy. Uh, as always, keep up the good fight. Don't stop just because, you know, you feel like we're not gaining ground. I mean, we have to keep going. We can't just give up that easily. It's one of those weird things of uh, we have to keep pushing ourselves and pushing ourselves and just keep motivated. I mean, if you wholeheartedly believe in vaping, it's something that we have to keep up with. It's just, it's been a never ending thing and it probably will be a never ending thing. And we just have to make sure we educate people. We, uh, bring more, you know, what we can of what we can to the masses, letting people know and all that kind of thing. So, uh, let's just jump into some, some quickie news stuff here. Um, real quick, uh, sources, I quit smoking by vaping.org or .com. Really good information there. Keep up with those guys. Casa.com or .org. Uh, not blowing smoke. All all the channels that you have. There are many available resources and tools that you can use if you need anything advocacy related. Just, you know, it's one of those things of just keep up with it. Stay in tune and you're good to go. I mean... I know I talk about advocacy. We have people, other people talking about advocacy and all that kind of thing. So please, you know, keep up the good fight with us. All right. So let's see. Uh, so this article is from Vape News. It says studies find young adult vapors not turning to tobacco. Big surprise, right? Brinkwire reports that young adult vapors are not turning to tobacco. A new study from Georgetown University Medical Center is offering reassurance over the panic that has ensued regarding young adult vapors. The new study suggests that if more young adults are were going to move from e-cigarettes to regular cigarettes, it would have happened at 2014 tipping point. What what the evidence is showing is that young adult smoking is declining even more rapidly than it has so far. Okay, I'm going to stop right there for now. If you guys listen to uh, the Wolf Bite show on vape, vape Radio, yes, we're on Vape Radio now. We're not just a podcast. We're an actual radio show now. So if you guys listen to us, I went on a rant at a point I felt like I needed to apologize for some of the things I said. And... At another point, I don't. I really feel like I shouldn't apologize for what I said. So it's one of those things that if you actually listened to the show and you heard what I had to say uh, and you didn't agree with me, I I am very, email me. Uh, I am at clownvapes at gmail.com and clownvapes at outlook.com. Either one, I will try my best to respond it or I could even start doing uh, viewer mails and stuff like that. We have started doing listener mail on the show and if there's any question directly straight at me, I more than am willing to either answer you through the email or on the show. So, you know, if you guys ever want to get in contact with me over anything, I am more than happily here for me to answer whatever you need for me to do. I mean, I have some knowledge. If not, I can direct you to who does. I have many. I have some resources and I have people that have resources. It's one of those weird things of this is a community and we look out for each other and we got each other's back. So. But my point was the fact that, like, um, we keep hearing about the epidemic, the epidemic, the epidemic. And yet this epidemic doesn't really, like, account for the fact that, like, cigarette smoking is declining. It's on a nice decline. It's going down. And then they want to look at the epidemic of uh, smoking or of vaping. But we've all turned into a less harmful uh, entity we are vaping we are har- we are doing harm reduction which long run isn't that what we want isn't that what we are looking for you know it's one of those weird things of you want to throw one thing on in our faces but you don't really want to uh acknowledge the simple fact that people are making a healthier choice for themselves and it's one of those weird things you know the royal college of physicians has already said that it's 95% healthier. Even the United States College of Physicians has said the same exact thing. When Canada approved vaping, most of their research was American research. You want to tell me where those numbers are going? 
Why hasn't that been mentioned? Why do we have this giant public scare about everything else but the actuality of what's happening? And it's just one of those things that like perplexes me. It just boggles my mind. And I'm just like, uh, yeah. So, you know, uh, let's continue reading what this this article has to say has to say in 2013 cigarettes were almost three times more popular for high school students than vaping was by 2015 the statistics were completely flipped as 2.3 2.39 young adults had vaped and just 1.37 million has smoked combustible cigarettes in the past year by 2016 1.7 million young adults aged American admitted to vaping regularly in in the month prior to being surveyed. The bottom line is that cigarettes is losing popularity in the U.S. in general and particularly among young adults. The cigarette decline really took off in 2013, which coincides with the vaping surge for 18 to 21 year olds. If vaping was being widely adopted and so significantly pushed more young Americans to picking up combustible cigarettes, we would have already seen smoking trait take an upward turn or at least for its sharper decline to slow. The research, the researcher state. So, I mean, it's just kind of the point I just made. Uh, it's going teen smoking, teen. Because here's the thing. Another one that I hate is that when they say teens are smoking, they're talking about 18, 19 to 20 year olds. And yes, they're teenagers, but they are also considered adults. I'm sorry, but that's one of those things that all of this shit needs to be clarified. All of it. I feel that they just add certain buzzwords and don't clarify certain parts of their language just to feed their agenda. And that is complete misconception. And that is just bullshit. All right, so let me see. Do, do, do. What? Where was I? I lost my place. Okay, here we go. While while caution is warned and interpreting our findings, they paint a consistent picture of acceleration reduction in youth and young adult smoking prevalence as vaping become more widespread. The research is at. If our primary concern is uh, population level trends in youth and young adult smoking, which we believe is appropriate when vaping is not shown to be serious cause for concern and may be playing a contributing role to the recent steep decline in youth and young adult smoking. Then they have like uh, the, the article where they got the information from and the study for the uh, Georgetown Medical uh, Center. So. Again, it's one of those weird things of we we keep getting bombarded with all this information, but a lot of it is either misleading. It has a lot of gaps or things that they don't mention within this whole spectrum of things just to fit their agenda. And it's one of those things of they need to knock that off. We need to actually you be honest with your public. I mean, seriously, be honest. Why? If you're if you're lying, yeah, the masses aren't gonna look into information. They're not gonna like try to educate themselves. But you're still hurting the people that are trying to get off cigarettes or people that want to get off cigarettes in the future. And you're taking away this one viable option. So this is one of those weird things of, you know, why make things more complicated? So let me see. Uh. All right, we're going to move on to uh, do a little bit of international news. I feel uh, if you guys listen to the show this weekend, there will be a special guest and just teaser stuff. But this kind of plays into it a little bit where I feel that we not only have to educate ourselves within American advocacy, but we need to know what's happening around the world. And seeing things outside of what we are dealing with here in the U.S. as messed up as it is. At points, there are other countries that are doing worse off. I think what Greece, it's completely illegal. Uh, I think Japan or China, one of those two, it's completely illegal. And if it is China, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head here, but if it is China, there's just a full blown irony in that whole situation since most of our products are Chinese made. 
So, you know, it is one of those things of we have to continue uh, educating ourselves, not only in our own. So we have to, like, be able to, like, teach ourselves and continue to, you know, move on and press on and educate within whatever we need to do, you know. So with that being said. That being said, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some New Zealand vaping laws here. Apparently, New Zealand is uh, this is what the the uh, headline says: New Zealand to tighten vaping laws. Sorry, I had to take a quick vape. New Zealand government has announced its its uh, intention to craft new laws which will treat vaping and vapor products along with smokeless tobacco products and same the same as smoking combustible tobacco products. In addition to extending prohibition against smoking in restaurants, bars, and other public accessible businesses to vapor and smokeless tobacco products across New Zealand, the new laws will also change how the two additional products categorize categories may be displayed at retail points of sale. The announcement of the plan this Friday by Associate Health Minister Jenny Salasa. C- C- Salesa, Salesa. Sorry if I butchered your name. With the following comment by her, vaping is significantly less harmful alternative to smoking and has been used as an effective tool to quit smoking. However, it is not completely risk-free, and that's why we need to make it as safe as possible to protect young people from taking it up. However, uh, as is usually the case. Even some New Zealand officials remain wary of the potential for the new laws to create unintended consequences. Tobacco control generally general manager Mihi Blair said, I'm concerned that these regulations will limit smokers access to vapor and fruit and the fruit flavors, which research and committees tells us that are appealing to draw cards towards vape vapes when transitioning from cigarettes it would be a great it would be great if nobody ever smoked anything but this is the real world we live in all right so i have spoken to some folks you know from down under down under and yes i am being offensive with my crappy accent but uh i have spoken to some folks and i know some of the stuff that the new zealand's doing uh here, let me pull up the article because they actually like from like an actual New Zealand slash Australian thing. They have uh, a little bit of what they are uh, talking about here. Give me a second. Here we go. And uh, this this article, like it explains a little bit like what they're wanting to do, which I mean, personally, yeah to a point i i don't care much for regulation or being told what to do or where to do it but i feel that within reason there are some things that can be done and i mean what they're trying to do is encourage uh smokers to transfer to vaping and other more uh less harmful nicotine products another one though that this one to me is one of those fair i feel that it's fair is uh, making safer products, meaning uh, regulations over how, like, say, your e-liquids are made, that they are, you know, they keep the cleanest conditions for you to get your e-liquids. I feel that that is a very proper one. I'm sorry, but that's one of those ones. Uh, sorry about that jump cut. Uh, yeah, somebody came knocking at the door, so, eh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, with all that being said, uh, they, like I said, uh, there's... In New Zealand, they they got what they got going on. They are also trying to push, you know, no smoking, vaping for 18 and under. Perfectly natural, perfectly makes sense. So there are some things that they you can't argue. Other ones, I feel that maybe they should work out, I guess. I mean, it's one of those things of since I don't live there, I can't really speak much for it. Uh, there is more to be looked up more research to be done and more that we can try to do to help out so yeah 
Alrighty, so i am kind of lost my track here, so we will continue on with the show. Uh, we are going to move into some... What do I got next? Beer time. Let's do it. Alright, guys, so uh, let's do some beer. Uh, let me get this a little closer here. Alright, so this week's beer... I have done this one, I think, on camera before. I can't remember. It's been a while. Uh, but this is actually a Christmassy kind of seasonal. It's one of my favorites, and I just got to do it again. So this is uh, Stone Chocoveza. There you go. Get a nice view of it. Chocoveza. They've redone the packaging because normally this comes in a bottle. Now it's in a can. Which, as my beer guy said to me, now you can shotgun it. So, hey, there's that. This is a uh, Stone Chocovesia Imperial Stout inspired by Mexican hot chocolate. Stout brewed with chocolate, coffee, bacilla peppers, vanilla, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Okay, then. Some guy just walked by saying, I gotta eat. So, do gotta eat. Uh, this beloved stout, when first introduced as a limited special collaboration release with San Diego home brewer Chris Banker, after his recipe won over won our annual homebrew competition, the Cerveceria Insurgente. Insurgente. It was an instant hit, and fans began clamoring for its return. Seeing as how its amazing flavor profile is evocative of Mexican hot chocolate featuring coffee, basilla peppers, vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a generous amount of own in-house made chocolate, with we concluded it was uh, the perfect stout to re-release in celebration of the holidays. And the entire winter winter season winter season, this is a high, now a highly anticipated yearly tradition that we are pleased to present from us to you, and make a perfect wintry gift from you to your friends, loved ones, and simply to yourself. Cheers. They are part of the Brewers Association Independent Craft. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a thing. If you guys know anything about beer or follow any beer podcasts like the Beerists and stuff, they have talked about that, that there is actually now a, a, uh, a brew, like a craft brew, um, a craft brew, um, league or association or some shit like that, that they, uh, they let you know if it's made by a, a craft brewery or if it's somebody ran through, say one of the big three. In that kind of situation, not really get into that. If you guys ever listened to the, uh, when I was doing the vape beer and tacos podcast, we kind of touched a little bit on that on, does it still count as craft beer brewing if they are a subsidiary of one of the big three? And if you know, well, like if you follow beer stuff, you know what I mean? When I say big three, I just don't want to throw out names cause I just feel like an ass for doing it. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, where is the, okay. 8.1%. Uh, it's a 12 ounce can. It's a six pack. I think it's like 14, 15 bucks for the sixer of this. And yeah. All right. Let's, let's get, let's get our pour on. I am excited. Cause I haven't had this almost a year. Check that out. All right, we got the whole 12 ounce can in here. That is one dark beer. Seriously, I like you can't even see me behind it. You could see the reflection of my screen monitor right here, but that's about it. And that just uh I'm so excited. Oh, there's that chocolateiness that they were talking about. Uh, uh, okay. I'm going to be honest. I just want to dive into this already. All right. So we're going to do this. I'm going to give you a taste and let's see if, let's see if, uh, last year's versus this year's is any good. All 
It's got a heavier coffee flavor. Mm. It tastes like a like a semi sweet, almost like a seventy percent dark chocolate, like lighter on the milk chocolate. Pretty good. Yeah, just oh, this is one of those ones uh, like if I could have it year round, I probably would. And I probably should stock up to have it year round. All right, so first we're gonna try the uh, Steadfast Chino as a vape pairing and see how that works out for me. So let's do this. All right, let's see. Oh, that just brings out the chocolate in it. Yeah, that is definitely like the taste of a... Uh... I don't know, my hat's bugging me. There you go. That's a little bit more even. Uh, it's got definitely like a full-on like dark chocolate flavor to it. Oh, dude, that is so good. Yeah, with the with the Chino from Steadfast, it really does um take away the the coffee flavor and it leaves behind the the chocolate. It's really good. I'm liking that pairing. That's a good one. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Next, we're going to do the, um, since, you know, this is all like Mexican and stuff. We're going to go with the Orchata Churro from Danish. In the uh, Goon War uh, Warlock's Hammer combo here. Give me a second. <coughs> yeah, that that's burp life right there. All right, so let's give this a try. Oh, that definitely changes things. It brings out a bit more sweetness in the beer along with the juice. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. Trying to think of what else I could do with this. I got two more. Let's give this one a try. And I have to do one of my own juices. I mean, come on. All right. So this is the uh, Blue Sin. I don't have a whole lot left, which makes me sad. But that just means I get to make more. All right. And I got that in the uh, Goon Stew Cap. Look at that. Stew cap. Oh, look at that. Yeah. On the Suicide Queen. So, yeah, let's give this one a try and see how that goes. Okay, so Blue Sin is a blueberry cinnamon crumble. And that blueberry kind of like gives us this very different sweetness that like the steadfast or the churro didn't. And it just gives it a completely different flavor profile. The aftertaste is kind of not there. I'll be honest, it's kind of not. It doesn't sit well on the tongue. It does have quite a bit of a sit on the tongue kind of flavor. So that one's not bad. I like that. Uh, What? I wish I, okay, so I'm still working on those two new flavors. I've been like teasing forever at this point. It feels like forever. I still have those and I wish I had some on me right now because I've already torn through the bottles that I had. So, because I know both of them probably would have worked perfectly fine. Uh, next, we're going to go with the uh, Leviathan. What is this one again? Sea salt caramel, caramel custard. Let's see how this one is. I have that in the Plan B24 on top of my Arc Mod. So let's give that a try. Now, it kind of does what the Blue Sin does with the aftertaste and what stays on your tongue. And it doesn't help. It actually makes it so much worse. 
All right, so a coffee vape, a nice coffee vape, uh, the churro works perfectly fine. Just I don't think the sea salt and the blue sin really, not so much, not so much for me. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. What else do I have on around here? I feel like I need to try more things, but I think for now we're good. We're good. We're going we're gonna to leave it at those four. Be happy. And yeah. All right, guys. So next we're going to go into some vape mail. I am excited to open all the vape mail. All right. So let's do it. All right, guys. So it's uh, vape mail time. So let's get into these. Yeah, this guy. And this is from uh, Vapor DNA. And I mean, honestly, a lot of this is stuff I personally bought for myself, but like to share. And sadly enough, it creates content. Yeah. Now, if I could get it open. I need to sharpen that. All right, here we go. Ooh, they sent some goodies in the bag. What did they send? Okay, so a uh, vape rag that looks like a mini... Uh, what's it called? Uh, one of those dealies. A mini mouse pad. Stickers. Always love stickers. And this is what I got in that package. Got the FP. And I am excited to try this guy out. That does look really nice. I'm sorry to all the naysayers about this thing, but that looks really nice. Alright, this next one is from uh, Local Vape. It's just some, some very uh, simple things over here. Yeah, look at that. I uh, can't even see it in the bag. Yeah, they were having a, a buy one, get one, and these are honestly dirt cheap. So go check out uh, Local Vape for these. These are uh, DHD Trickster Cap tips. Let's see if it'll focus. There you go. Look at that. That looks really nice. And these are going actually on, where did, did I already put that back there? Yeah, I did. I'm not going to reach for it, but it's going on my TM24. Or not, not my TM24, on my TM original, the Twisted Messes. And if you guys follow Instagram, that Twisted Messes is going on my Dull Dime. So I got a matching tip, so that way it looks all nice and clean to put together. Very, very excited. All right, and lastly, it's this guy. Uh, it's a little bit of overkill on the packaging. Uh, coil image, you're insane, dude. But yeah, this is from my buddy Coil Image. We did some uh, some fun tradesies and stuff like that because in the vape world, that's how we live. And this is like my favorite part. I am told that I do overkill on my packaging whenever I send anything out. That that right there is overkill. At least it's nice and protected. <laughs> that is insane. And he had sent me pictures of how he packaged them, so I kind of knew what I was getting <laughs> when he sent it. Well, if I ever needed bubble wrap, I could just save this for later. Seriously, that is a sheet. 
That is a lot of bubble wrap. All right, so this is what's in that one right there. They sent me a baggie of... Oh, okay, I know what these are for. Look at that. That looks really cool. I cannot wait to try this guy out, and we'll see how it goes. And let me open the last bit here. Check that out. That is a solid brass uh, roundhouse from Kennedy. I'm excited to try this guy out. There's the uh, the build deck and all that kind of thing. At least I was told it was a roundhouse. There it is. Okay, I couldn't get that. I couldn't get the atomizer off. Nice number one twenty one. I am super excited for this. We'll see how this goes. But I cannot wait to try this guy out. And hopefully next video you guys see me in, you'll see some of this gear and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that was uh, the vape mail section. Uh, really excited to try all this new stuff and all that kind of thing. Hopefully it works out really nice for me. And yeah. All right. Uh, so thank you for joining me again for another vlog this week. And... I'll catch you guys next week. Uh, remember, uh, follow me on Instagram, all the social media stuff, Clown Vapes. Uh, check out my site, clownvapes.com. And me and Frank are now on Vape Radio. We are on at 7 a.m. on Saturdays, and they replay our show at 9 p.m. on Sundays. So check us out. Give us a listen. Uh, send us some listener mail. Send me some vape uh, viewer mail. We are more than happy to answer any of like questions you have of any of the topics we cover or any topics we could cover in the future. So, yeah, thanks for joining me. And again, as always, mix on, vape on. I'm gonna put that as the blue. All right, let's see if we can do this. <laughs>